Hi, I'm Eric. I found my phone and welcome to another video. Surprise! Uh, on this day, Pablo Vitar has released her fifth studio album, Noitada. It just came out today on this random Wednesday that I'm filming. I do not know when I'm gonna get it to you. I will try to do it as soon as I can. I actually had other videos I was gonna film today, but those short videos are gonna have to wait until I have time. I have a whole new Pablo Vitar project to discuss with y'all. I noticed that it's 10 songs, which I believe is the most she might have had on any given album. However, it is only 19 minutes. How are you gonna do it like that? Really, a whole album? 19 minutes, okay. She really took the fact that I was making jokes about her songs being short, being like two, two and a half, maybe three minutes, and really it's just like, <laughs> I'm gonna give you exactly something to troll on. So we'll see how it, it goes. We have heard A Man Noite, and then I also listened to Discontrolada, I think at one point on my own. I don't really remember it at all, so it will probably be like a new experience for me. So we'll see besides those songs, what sticks out on the album. But anyway, let's get into it. Track number one, Noitada intro. Okay. It's getting in a little bit of a beat. Okay, it feels like we're in a club. Oh, this is all spoken word. Oh, that transitioned so neatly into Amayanote. Okay. So that was the Noitada intro. And I think I'm gonna have to wait to know my thoughts on it until after I've heard the whole project because I think this is a concept album of things happening on a night out. I mean, you have a man going to quite literally midnight and then also the album title is being a night out. So she's saying I'm from the night, I belong to the night and I thought a lot of the things before I came here and now I'm not gonna give it up. She's basically reasserting herself as that bad chick after our Batido Tropical, which was a little more sad and not as hot girl time. This is hot girl time again. We are reaffirming that and I'm ready for that type of music. It was a cute little intro and it did flow so seamlessly. Thank you to the producers for making that possible and the mixers. Deeply appreciate it and gets us ready for track number two, A Man in the a song we know that also features Gloria Groove a song we enjoy. Let's hear it in the context of the album. Yeah, I had to hear that transition again. It was so good. This song's just a bop. And you know what to do. Yes, Gloria. Yes, Pablo, sing it out. I still feel like this is Gloria's song more than Pablo's, but still not a complaint. Will this break down at the end? Yes. It feels like it's a malfunction, but kind of in the best way possible. So that was a man noite, a song I've heard, a song I enjoy. It's still fully a bop. And yeah, I'm ready to see where the rest of this album takes us. They're doing stuff at midnight. You know what they do at midnight. Do I have to share? I don't think so. But if you want more of my thoughts on it, I've already covered that. And my opinions on it remain largely the same. So go check out the video. Track number three is Descontrolada which features M.C. Carol. Let's hear it again. I very vaguely remember it. I remember it being kind of a song that goes off, but I could be totally wrong on that. Ooh, she's muffled. We love a muffled vocal. <laughs> okay, M.C. Carol. This is kind of giving the timbre of the person's Screaming the Bonakina part. Bonakina being from Gloria. Are you putting auto tune on Pablo? Why? Oh, this beat and that timbre also reminds me of the Bandeed song. I feel like if I was hearing this song, I would barely even recognize that Pablo was in here. So that was just Control Lada and. Alright, this was something that was noticeable before and then I forgot why it was noticeable and it's noticeable because okay MC Carol is MC Caroling over here and then they put Pablo in autotune I could see Arca doing something with Pablo in an autotune style but like this made it sound like it was 
making up for the fact of like she can't sing and she totally can so i don't know about that i get that autotune could be stylistic in how that song is set up but her vocals really don't lend themselves very well to doing it in a non-experimental way yeah i didn't like that part as much it was all right lyrically it's definitely along the lines of 111 and being you know flirtatious and i'm gonna do my night out type thing i feel like this album in general is probably going to be similar in tone to 111 because 111 is really like a birthday party playlist her night out i mean i assume that's what she's gonna do for her birthday is that she's gonna go have her night out after that besides parabens which is very specifically tied to you know happy birthday otherwise both of them function very much as a party flirtatious type vibe and i think that's probably what she's channeling here because that's also probably what many of her most popular songs are i believe the most popular songs of hers are ones that are based in partying and enjoying your time together i mean yeah i just looked at her most popular songs right now besides the two Amianote and Descontrolada. We have Modo Turbo, which definitely within that. And then Suakara. I don't remember what Suakara was about. It's about throwing it in your face. Yeah, it's like being confident. And the number one right now is Saul with Pedro Sampaio. Bye. I have not actually heard that one. I just know other Pedro Sampaio songs that you have seen me react to on this channel. So yeah, this album definitely getting back to her popularity in terms of the I'm here to have a party. And while it might strike me with MC Carol's vocals being a little, you know, strong in terms of timbre and a little harsh, it's otherwise something that's like very much like within Pablo Vitar's alley and doesn't surprise me that they did something with. Still, don't auto-tune Pablo unless it's really useful to the song and I don't think it was here. So, wish it wasn't in that way but that also is the second longest song in the album and i mean no two was the first so now it's going to be short 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 and with that in mind i'm going to do tracks four and five together and the track four being calma amiga interlude which features anita and dj ramemes or destruidor do funk and track number five Belinha de corazao which just features Anita. I'm putting those together because one is the interlude, as it states, and they both feature Anita, so I feel like they will flow into each other nicely. So I'm just gonna have them together and then we'll talk about both of those songs after the fact. Oh, we fast here. Where are we going? Is it the DJ making those voices? This feels like a good DJ set right now. Okay, Pablo is just laughing. We know he's proud to do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, that was an interesting transition. Ooh. Oh, is that a glockenspiel? I can definitely tell it's mallet percussion. It feels like a video game remix. Yeah, bubbly. See, that sounds like, I don't know, Mario getting a coin. Okay, and Nito, what you say? The speed of this with the mouth production, wow. See, this is the auto-tuning, like, Chet Monkey on vocals that I'm like, okay, it's experimental, though. See, that that's video game right there. Moto Turbo. So that was Calma Amiga Interlude and Bolina de Corosal and the Calma Amiga interlude was fun very fast paced didn't feel interlude like interludes i don't know they feel short but slower normally in my head like that's my impression that i get with them but here oh we were fast and they're saying calm down my friend you gotta be chill about this sick beat that's happening i guess yeah i don't know what they mean necessarily because that beat is so fast why is it so aggressive <laughs> I don't know. But then it goes into Blina de Corazal, which translates to heart candy, just in time for Valentine's Day. And they're like, you want to try my heart candy? You can get a taste, but don't get used to it. 
very 111. This album is so 111. Yeah, it's about the beat being sick, or you know I'm that chick, or you know I got the goods, I know you want the goods, give me your goods, all that good stuff. But also still definitely very fast and stuff that I can't fully process yet. I'm gonna have to listen to this album fully again before having more thoughts about each song in particular. It's fun. It's definitely quirky. It's definitely meant to be speedy. They could definitely expand it into like a 30 minute album if they wanted to slow it down, but that tempo is so fast. So hopefully you can dance that fast. Track number six is Daratita. Ooh. Different vibes. This feels a little bit of a mix between this album and Fancy Dot Tropical. Okay. Wait, this post chorus vibing. So you can see she doesn't need your attitude. She's good. Oh, we're breaking it down more. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was Daratita, which translates to Melted, and this is a little more romantic. I don't know if it's romantic. It's intimate, for sure. Classic Pablo being like, put that sweet on my tongue. She's also saying that she's hostage to pretty much her libido. So, Pablo, thank you for being bold and open about yourself. You allow everyone else that hears your music to also be bold and open as well. So this is a little sweet, not, Something that feels as much like, oh, I can brush you off. Seems like someone's gotten a little under her skin because they were on her skin. It's a vibe, it's definitely a good club track. I'm wondering if this is meant to be played almost in the way that like Renaissance or several other dance pop club track albums are where they are supposed to flow into each other. That They are a full set pretty much because I feel like that would make a little more sense for why it's a little short. And also some of the songs definitely have been flowing into each other very nicely if I don't stop them right away. So that is really cool. And I'm excited to hear that naturally happen when I just listen to the album straight through. It actually almost escaped my head from looking at the lyrics, but I did like the more tropical influences on it. It reminded me of Bati Del Tropical, which I, if I ever did a Pablo Vitar ranking, I think Bati Del Tropical would be close to the top, if not at the top. So any references to that are gonna be wonderful. This is also the only song over two minutes that doesn't have a feature on this album, which is wild. Track number seven is Penetra. Is that what I think it means? It also features O Canala. Why does this sound like sale? It's working slower. Oh, you stopped it for a second. Why does this feel like a lovemaking song? That's why. Ow? You can definitely cry into this. Oh, I forgot we had a feature. I don't know how I feel about their voice. Are they repeating themselves? Wah! Ow. So that was Penetra. It does mean penetrate. Okay. I'm confused on this song because the lyrics are actually about a party that you weren't invited to and it's like, oh, who cares? I'm gonna still show up anyway. Okay. I mean, if it's literal and it's a type of party that doesn't really need an invitation, then sure. If it's just going to a club, sure. If it's a metaphor for like love, consent's important. So just saying. Just the amount of the times they say the word penetrate, I can't think of that in a way that's just like, oh, I'm entering the, the party, just generally. I know that's what they're saying, but is that really the club they're entering? Sonically does sound really good. It sounds like a slow jam, but turned up a little bit. And so sonically, I don't have any critiques on it. Lyrically, I'm a little concerned though. Okanala is cool, I guess. I registered them, but they are saying penetra, penetra, penetra over and over. And then they have a little verse that's pretty much just repeating what Pablo said. So it's not that needed of a feature. You know, some features really carry a song. Like for example, Corpo Sensual, Mateus Carrillo. I still think about you. 
Meanwhile, this one doesn't make the song worse, but it doesn't really add much to the song. Like, if Pablo did that verse instead, I wouldn't have a strong opinion on it at all. Like, it would just be pretty much the same. It's like they're not really there to me, but that's just my opinion. Track number eight is Apetitosa, featuring MC Chalino and DJ Tonias. Don't know who those DJ and MC are. Let's see how they sound. Oh, I. Ah, ah. Okay, we're making a little cinematic here. Ooh, there's some video game sounds again. Yes, give us some pure Pablo now. Oh wait, it's already over? Under two minute songs really mess with you. So that was Appetitosa, uh, which means appetizing. And yeah, I think I like this song. It's flirtatious. It's saying that everyone finds your appetizing and what more and the MC or the DJ Probably the MC. The DJ probably doesn't talk. The MC was saying, oh, that they just want to catch up and, you know, do some things with Pablo. And all right, you know, you can be flirty. You can be a little intimate about it. I don't know. This one felt like a song featuring Pablo the guitar. And not in a way that means that she is being featured. It just means it doesn't feel like her song originally. It feels like it's mainly their song. I don't know. It doesn't feel like it's hers. It fits the vibe of the album, but I guess an album that has so much features represented doesn't always land as one's own project. It gives a little more of a 111 deluxe or even 111 original where the songs are kind of put together as in they were made during a certain time, but they're mainly collaborations. And if they're mainly collaborations, there's only so much of you that can be shown in a collaboration. And so when half your album is that way, I don't know about that. I will say these songs are more cohesive, but just in terms of, you know, her vocals running through them, not as cohesive. Track number nine is Culpa de Cupido. I think that would stand for like Cupid's Fault. So we'll see what Cupid did this time. Okay, already mixing it up. Yeah, gorgeous there. Who's on? Oh, wait, this sounds like something from Bati Dao Tropical now. It gives a Lua right now. All right then. So that was Culpa do Cupido. And yeah, I was right. It's Cupid's fault for doing that. And what it's doing is making you fall in love with Pablo. It's not my fault if you tasted it, liked it, and then you cried. That's all on Cupid. That's you. It's problema su. Not problema mu. It was a sweet little song. It's under two minutes, so definitely not something I could fully process, and that is the case for most of these songs. I feel like I'm rushing through describing them, and that's just because, like, I hear a minute, and I'm like, okay, that was a song that I heard. It was a good time. It had some components of Bati Dao mixed with the Night Owl vibe that they're going for. So that was nice to have a little bit of tropical moments. But yeah, I am intrigued how this project will end. It's going to end with track number 10 after, which is only a minute and 22 seconds. So short. Why so short? I know I keep harping on it being so short, but I'm just like, I would like some time to like live with in the album. So I guess you'll have to do that through repetition. But with that, let's get into what happens after. Ooh, feels sunshiny, almost like Irregular for her debut. Ooh, something's happening. Oh, is it some trash cans or some chimes? I can't even tell. Acapella for the end? Okay. So that was after, and that was beautiful. Pablo, guitar can sing. Don't put auto tune on her. 
No, this is beautiful. It's criminal that is a minute and 22 seconds. That's rude. That's homophobic. What the heck? Why? Give her time to shine and actually sing and maybe belt out and have like a moment at the end versus just a little acapella leave off. The song is her kind of wrapping up the album in which she's saying, hey, I will live forever. I'm hostage of the night. It will never be different. And what's the times after? Like what the after of the time? I don't really know what that means. It might make more sense in Portuguese, but I don't know Portuguese. So if you'd like to explain on that, please let me know because I would love to know. But yeah, this was very like sweet. I liked how it ended a little more chill after a very, very speedy project. With that said, we have finished this album. And I have to say, I feel like in some ways this album was a little bit designed for me to enjoy it, being that it's very upbeat, it's very percussive. Yeah, that's what I normally ask for many artists that want to give me a bop. But I don't necessarily feel that way when it comes to Pablo Vitar. I feel like Batidao Tropical, it's not like a slow project by any means. It's really not. She doesn't do that many slow songs. She normally is upbeat. But something about her having a little bit more of a showing of vulnerability in that project and also just the tropical sounds of it and using a lot of the style she grew up with along with Techno Brega, that was very cool. And I really enjoyed that project so much. So when I think of what a follow-up project from her would be, I knew that because Bati Jeff Tropical, I don't think was as commercially successful as 111 and just knowing like what the singles were, I don't think it really was the same level for her commercially. And so I didn't expect her to really continue with that sound. I felt like she would try to do, you know, her big pop moment. And she's doing that here. She's doing so many collaborations. She's in the club. She's giving her themes of flirtatiousness and love and never stopping the party, which I think a lot of her audience really resonates with. And I do tend to, and I wanted to have my bad chick era this year. And I think this album does work with that. But I guess I'm surprised it doesn't feel as much like her and her artistry. I don't think she gets her moment as much. This feels like she has less creative control, but maybe she does have a lot of creative control that I just don't know. Maybe this is the most time she's had creative control, but I don't know. This feels like something that a team came up with that we're going to make this. And it doesn't give as much authenticity. And not that I need Pablo Vitar to be vulnerable with us on every song, but I think aside from after, I don't think she is on this project. And it's also just 19 minutes. I just don't think I have a lot of time to process this. And so that also might be one of the things about it is that I do need to listen to it again. And you'll see when I do my final ranking of songs I like and all of that, whether songs really stuck with me, but they don't really have time to leave an impression. And I don't know why they were made to be so short. Maybe, you know, she's like, oh, I already said what I had to say. And a lot of times they do get a couple choruses into that minute or that two minute. Like they do have their moment, I guess. So some songs can fully exist as a standalone moment and be short. That is definitely possible, but I don't know. Give yourself time to breathe. I've been trying to sit back and really just enjoy songs again. And I feel like this one feels like it's made for like TikTok or made to think about, okay, how do we get the point across in a short amount of time? And I think I used to be someone who really enjoyed like sometimes some of the shorter songs. And I do sometimes still enjoy some shorter songs for sure. But I think I am trying to work within my brain to enjoy longer songs as well and have them play more because I think sometimes you just need to sit within a song and there's not a single song in this album that you can sit with. You are standing up dancing, you're having your moment, and I guess today I'm tired. <laughs> so we'll see how this project ages for me. You'll hear my thoughts, I'm sure, in a future video. But for now, I like it. It just still doesn't feel like a full album. Oh my gosh, it feels like just an EP that has a lot of short songs on it somehow that they were able to make it 
like an album, but it feels more EP because of its length. And all its short thoughts, I don't know, doesn't make it for full baked ideas that I can fully digest. I definitely would be something where it's like, oh, I ate this so fast that I feel like I'm gonna throw up. And that doesn't mean it's bad. The food can be absolutely delicious that you're eating so fast, but you're not gonna savor it if it's going so fast. <laughs> I also need to go out to this album and I don't think I get to go out before I will release this video, but if I have a strong change in opinion after that, I will be sure to let you know. What do you think of this project? Did you like it? Did you not? Do you also feel like this album just sped by? I feel like it really did. But let me know what your favorites are, what your least favorites are. If you feel like this feels like a full project, any context behind any of the songs or the album itself, I would love to know all of your thoughts or about also the other people that are featured in this project. I would also love to know about them as well. But yeah, let me know all of your thoughts down in the comments below. With that said, here are some of my favorites of the top tier songs. I love the standout out soul ones. I'm gonna be playing over and over again. Songs in the middle are songs I like. I'll add them to my playlist, but they might not be the top of the top. And songs at the bottom are just not really my thing. Doesn't mean they're a bad song, just means they're not for me, and that's okay. Pablo did not make this album for me, but I will still take it on my night out. If you like this video, please like it, just comment down below, would you like me to react to or do next on my channel, please subscribe to my channel if you're not already and you'd like to be. And thanks for watching. This is Charles Stormer. Catch you later. Get out of the zone.